It was actually prepared by the previous government, but we have no problem with that. Thank you very much. Um, I call the Honourable Amy Adams. Chairman, uh, look, I am looking forward to taking a call this evening on part one uh, of this taxation bill, doing, uh, working on the neutralising of base erosion and profit shifting piece of work, which, as other speakers have acknowledged and as the Minister and the Chair has acknowledged, has been a piece of work that has spanned two governments. Uh, but more importantly than that, actually, it's a piece of work that has international impetus uh, and is really New Zealand's response to the OECD piece of work looking at how New Zealand's rules need to be uh, amended and adopted in concert with the rest of the world so that we stop uh, the actions of a number of multinationals who look to, to game relative tax jurisdictions for, for tax advantage. And, and what we see most commonly, of course, is uh, using inter-party related transactions uh, offshore to, to move money effectively to a tax jurisdiction that's more efficient for them uh, and to artificially uh, play with where they would otherwise have a place of operation. And uh, the work of the Finance and Expenditure Committee on this piece of work has been very good, has been very constructive, as you would expect with a bill like this uh, that has cross-party support and its, its, broad, uh, its broad parameters. I uh, came into the consideration of the bill part way through, and so it's certainly been very interesting to hear the contributions from my colleagues, uh, Paul Goldsmith and Andrew Bailey and David Carter and others who are still to speak. Uh, I want to thank the Minister for making genuine uh, attempts to address the questions that are raised, and that's certainly no, and I mean that very genuinely. I wasn't trying to have a dig, Mr. Nash, that it is very helpful when we see a Minister in the chair who is clearly keeping uh, track of the questions that are asked and trying to address them. Uh, and I think Mr. Nash will take some, uh, some comfort in the fact that, you know, similarly on this side of the House, we want to see this legislation simply in as good a shape it can be, and it is started as our legislation, it's now yours, but, but there is a, not yours, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, of course, uh, but there is a genuine interest in making sure we have it right. The, the part of the bill that I wanted to focus on in this uh, first call is around uh, another aspect of the transfer pricing rules, and Mr. Carter uh, obviously just made some comments around the grandparenting uh, arrangements that are part of that, and also the, uh, the operation of the advanced uh, pricing arrangements. Uh, the piece that I particularly wanted to talk about is the change that the Select Committee uh, was quite interested in, and I personally had quite a lot of interest in, which was around the time bar for bringing actions uh, under the transfer pricing uh, mechanisms. And, and you know, for the, for the hundreds of thousands of people who I'm sure are listening away at home, uh, you know, what we're talking about here is, a, is, is exactly the situation I described earlier, where related parties are using the ability to set the cost uh, of arrangements between them in a way that effectively allows them to move profits offshore. So that might be, obviously it could be a debt instrument, which is the most obvious one where interest rates are set, but equally it can be things like management fees between related parties, it can be royalties arrangements, uh, there can be any number of ways in which this is done. And the IRD, of course, have a very genuine interest in making sure that there is adequate time uh, for them to understand and drill into what are very complex uh, arrangements between very highly uh, lawyered up, to use a technical term, uh, firms who have access to a wide range of account, uh, accountancy advice and legal advice to help them uh, make these transactions look as legitimate as possible. And we all acknowledge that there's quite a piece of work in that. No one is by any stretch of the imagination suggesting that that is an easier and uncomplex un piece of work and that they are not dealing with some very, very able and adept and well-resourced combatants. So there's no question, uh, I think, between us on the, uh, the nature of the mischiefs to be solved. So where we started, transfer pricing arrangements have been in place in New Zealand, obviously, before this legislation. In this legislation, we're making some tweaks around the, uh, the way they apply to when a number of foreign investors work together as a controlling block to control a New Zealand company, all of which is very sensible, subject to the comments my colleagues have made. But previously, the time bar for the IRD to uh, bring and complete an investigation and issue a notice of, of a changed tax liability was four years. Four years from the end of the tax year in which the alleged uh, behaviour occurred. Under this piece of legislation, the IRD wanted, of course, to extend that out to seven years. Now, there was quite uh, a, a wave of submissions and opposed to this change from the major taxpayer groups. You know, there was Chapman Tripp, uh, the corporate taxpayers groups, EY, Russell McVeigh, PwC, KPMG, ASB, PowerCo. There was quite a long list. And so it was an issue that really concerned uh, taxpayers in New Zealand. And I don't think any of them 
certainly disputed the fact that the IRD needed to look into these and have a complex and effective way of going about it. I just wait for the buzzer and then I'll call Mr Chair. Mr Chair. Honourable Amy Thank you. And, and as I say, neither did the committee. But we, we, we really drilled quite hard with our advisor, with the officials, saying, look, do you really need seven years? Is, it, is, it, is there not something in what the submitters said where they're right that actually these are complex, detailed transactions? They're not one-off. They are year-on-year -year transactions. And actually, taxpayers do need the certainty of knowing what their tax position is. The position that the committee got to was that uh, was a bit of a hybrid. We, 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 we took the officials at their, uh, at their word that four years wasn't going to be long enough for those taxpayers who are, who are playing a bit of cat and mouse and not being as forthcoming as they could. And we certainly don't want people to be able to avoid IRD scrutiny through being non-compliant. On, uh, on, on the same way, though, we also took from the submitters that actually to leave every taxpayer exposed for up to seven years where there could be a review uh, is an extraordinary imposition. It doesn't provide the sort of certainty that taxpayers want, and it puts a huge amount more cost and complexity into both the prosecution of the behaviour but also the defence of it. So where the Select Committee got to was to say that the IRD uh, should be able to extend to seven years only if they have uh, commenced an investigation during the four years and had notified the taxpayer that it would be seven. You know, we can argue whether that was the right balance, but that's where the committee got, and, and I'm comfortable with that. Where I'm concerned, though, Mr Nash, is that the way the bill has actually landed in front of the House, and I'll refer you to page 57 of the bill, at the bottom of page 57, uh, where clause 36.4 provides the assessment. It doesn't actually do what the Select Committee thought it was doing, and it certainly doesn't do what the Select Committee commentary says it is doing. The Select Committee commentary makes it quite clear that the Select Committee wanted the change to say that the time period could only be extended if an investigation had been commenced and the taxpayers were notified. The change in the bill in Clause uh, 36.4 at the bottom of page 57 simply requires the IRD to notify that they're extending the time. Now, that's not what the Select Committee agreed at all. The Select Committee did not sign up for a situation in which the IRD could potentially, under this legislation, serve as a matter of course on every taxpayer and notice that they're extending the time period and it would automatically become seven years. We went through this in quite some detail and in a very co collegial and bipartisan way to try and get that right balance between fairness to the officials and fairness to the taxpayers. And where we landed, and this is, you know, you can check for yourself, the Select Committee commentary is very clear on this, we landed that the IRD would be required to have commenced an investigation and to advise the taxpayer of that. That's still the case. The legislation, the way it's written, and I can read it out, the Minister is saying that's still the case. The legislation as it's written at the bottom of page 57 makes it very clear that the only thing required for the IRD to extend the time is if at any time during four years the Commissioner notifies the taxpayer that this subsection applies. That means, Mr Nash, that in every case potentially the IRD could issue a form letter to every taxpayer saying that we're extending it. Now, that is not what the Select Committee said. So I, I really want to hear from you, uh, from, the, from the Minister and the Chair. He's just indicated verbally that that's still the case. I can utterly assure you on the reading of that legislation, it is not the case. Uh, and if the Minister is not able to point me to the provision in the bill that says the IRD may only extend it where an investigation has been commenced and is underway, then we're going to have to, to, to come up with a tabled amendment to make sure that the bill as in front of this House reflects what the Select Committee instructed to be in the Bill and what the Select Committee said in their uh, report was the intention of the amendments, because I can assure you right now that is not what they said and it is very, very far from the, what the Committee intended. And, and look, it might seem like a small point, but actually this, this is uh, a change that is not only does it speak to whether the Bill in front of us reflects the direction that the Select Committee gave it. Uh, and the Select Committee report. But it's also a very important point in getting that balance right between the reach and power of the state uh, and the right of taxpayers to have certainty and have some, some conclusion to their, to their legitimate affairs, to know when they can put uh, these issues to bed, and when they do come up, to have the resources and ability uh, to look into them uh, and defend them and for the IRD simply to address them. So these are important points, Mr Nash, uh, and, and I, I you know, make them very genuinely. And I really do think this House now needs not simply a statement that it's all fine. I think this House needs 
quite specific reference to the line item in the bill that makes it clear that there is something required of the IRD beyond simply saying, well, we're extending the time period, because that is not enough. Mr. Chair. Um, the Honourable Stuart Nash. Thank you very much. There, there are two points that I would like to address.